Kennedy of Louisiana. Hello, <clears throat> Hello Judge. Um, if you are a lawyer or an American, I guess it doesn't get any bigger or better than this. Um, congratulations. Um, in addition to honoring the wonderful state of Minnesota, and unless you correct me, I am going to assume that your, uh, your purple attire is also meant to honor LSU in my state. And if I squint real hard, it, I might call it Marion Blue, the colors of my Southern University in Louisiana. Um, I, want, I want to compliment you and the Biden White House for uh, selecting Senator Doug Jones to advise you. Uh, Senator Jones knows the Senate, and the Senate knows Senator Jones. And we know him to be quite the intellect, but uh, more important, we know him to be a person of good judgment and good will. And I'm, I'm glad that you've been listening to him. Um, I hope we will be able to use this hearing today to talk about, if not implicitly, at least implicitly, uh, two subjects. The first is the legitimacy of the United States Supreme Court. Um, where does the court get its legitimacy? What can we do to enhance it? Judicial legitimacy is important. I don't need to tell you that. I'm rather fond of the Constitution. I know you are too. When members of the United States Supreme Court interpret it, I want the American people to believe them. I want the American people to say, well, I may not agree, but the men and women who made that decision are intellectually honest and people of good faith. One of the primary roles of the United States Supreme Court is to uphold the rule of law. And sometimes justices have to uphold the rule of law when it's not popular. Sometimes justices have to uphold the rule of law when it's not popular with the majority of Americans. Boy, that's tough. Uh, it's also important. Um, Sometimes, not generally, but sometimes the majority can mean that just all the fools are on the same side. And that's what the courts are for. And um, I'm rather fond of the Bill of Rights, too, and I know you are as well. I've never believed that the Bill of Rights was there for the, uh, for the high school quarterback or the prom queen. They're covered by it. But the Bill of Rights is there to protect the rights who, of people who don't see the world exactly like everybody else or who don't look exactly like everybody else. Now, unfortunately, through history, we have had people, some well-intentioned, who tried to delegitimize the Supreme Court. Um, we had a president way back when who tried to impeach a Supreme Court justice. Uh, we had another president uh, who wanted to pack the court. Um, I remember the uh, impeach Earl Warren signs there in the Warren Court. Um, and, and most of the people who want to delegitimize the Supreme Court believe that the, uh, unlike our founders, in my judgment, believe that, uh, that, that members of the Supreme Court ought to be, ought to be and are, 
politicians in robes. They believe that the United States Supreme Court ought to be a mini Congress. They believe that the law is not the law. The law is supposed to just be politics practiced in a different way. And they believe in court packing. And they're wrong. Number two, I hope today that we can use this as an opportunity to talk about, if not explicitly, at least implicitly, that's what I'm going to try to do, the appropriate balance between representative government and declarative government. Now, in representative government, as you well know, um, people, through their elected representatives, make policy. In, in declarative government, um, policy is made by the unelected, the administrative state and the federal judiciary. Now, they're, 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 both are important. Both are important. I'm not saying this is a, a zero sum came or either or. What's, but what's just as important is we have the appropriate balance between representative government and uh, what I'll call declarative government. I mean, we have an administrative state. Did any of us ever think it would get this big? Is that healthy? We need to ask ourselves that. Is, is it really healthy to arrive at a circumstance where the administrative state passes 35 laws a year to our one? Is it really healthy to have an administrative state that makes its own laws, interprets its own laws, and enforces its own laws before courts with respect to which the administrative state appoints the judges? I think that's a fair question to ask. In terms of with respect to, to, to uh, declarative government in the Supreme Court and, and the federal judiciary, uh, federal judges have enormous power. They have to, but they do. They have enormous power. You're appointed for life. You can't be unelected. Your salary can't even be reduced. And you have to have that power. Judicial power is important. So is judicial restraint. I believe that the appropriate role of the federal judiciary is the following. Federal judges don't make law. They don't tell us what the law ought to be. They tell us what the law is. Now, I said primarily because, of course, sometimes federal judges make law. I mean, make the law of the case. You decide a case. Uh, you have to tell us what reasonable means in terms of searches and seizures. You have to help us define restraint of trade after we pass a statute. So, of course, judges make law. But I'm talking about, uh, uh, about the, uh, the proper balance. I'll leave you with the, the, these last thoughts, um, and then I'll yield back my time. Um, I want you to hear the words of one of, in what, my, in my opinion, is, is, is one of our most distinguished Supreme Court justices. I'm going to read, read uh, his words. The American people love democracy. And the American people are not fools. The people know their value judgments are quite as good as those taught in any law school. Maybe better. Value judgments, after all, should be voted on, not dictated. I look forward, Judge, to getting to know you better. And congratulations, Mom and Dad. <clears throat> Thanks, Senator Kennedy. Senator Padilla. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Judge Jackson, welcome back to the Senate.